Harrisburg Stampede, Justin Coble with I gotta him. change the freaking... Oh, there it is! Basically, they were it's playing Major League, League the, re- the real game, yeah. Oh shit, there's the Hattie. Welcome to episode 85 of the Not Our Sports Podcast. My name is Jason. I'm David. And this is the home of sports talk for the average Joe. Let's give a big thanks to uh, Harrisburg Stampede head coach Bernie Nowatarski for joining us last episode. Um, he was pretty ecstatic to hear that uh, it had a good response. And uh, his exact words were fan fucking tastic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that was a great interview. If you have not checked it out, oh, you're that doing was. yourself a disservice. You need to go back and. And check it out and give it a good listen to um, every interaction we've had with the Stampede thus far has just been fantastic. And no, it's been more than fantastic. I it's been fan fucking tastic, actually. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> um, but I think um, every interaction just sells me more on the team and the 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 process of the well, team. Well, not just that. It's like from the top down. It's all about community. That's it's the about best community. Thing about it. It's about family. That's the best it's thing about. about Absolutely, it's everything. the best thing from the top down. It's the. It's about the community. It's about the family from the top down. It's not just one person with one, you know, with one view, and that's the way it is. It's everybody from the top down has the same exact view on everything, which sells it, and you know, which sells it easily. You know, family, community, boom, there it is. It's awesome. Yeah. No, dude, that uh, was a great interview. I mean, just the fact that we had somebody who played in the NFL, who played in the USFL, and all, you know, all that, you know, j- 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 just talking to him in general was a great experience. Just, you know, just the same thing with Jay, a great talk. You know? It was. You know, yeah, big thank you for, you know, for, for him coming on. Yeah, definitely. Bernie was a, a good dude, and I look forward to sharing a beverage with him post-game sometime. Um, or a hug. <laughs> or a hug. <laughs> um, so, fun story. Let's 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 already deviate here a little bit. Why not? Fun story. Back in, uh, back in, was it 2021? Yeah. Um, Actually, I think it might be might have been this week in 2021 or 2022. I uh, went out to Bojangles in Reading to meet up with um, some people from the Breaking Kayfabe with Bowdrin and Barry Facebook group. One of them being Barry himself. Um, met up with uh, the Spikers, uh, Chris and Mac. Met up with Jamie Ward, uh, Amal Pitts. It was a good crew of people there. Um, and when I'm, I showed up, uh, I went to shake Barry's hand. He goes, nope, we hug in this group. And I was, <laughs> and, I mean, I can hug someone if I need to. Like, I'm not the biggest hugger in the world. Um, but I was so not prepared for the hug. It was like one of those weird, like, bro hugs where, like, I don't know what to do with my hands kind of hugs. Um, well, those are the best ones. Because, you know, and, you're just, like, awkward. You're just, like. What do we do? It here? Was, what do we it, do? It totally caught me off guard. I mean, <laughs> Barry is is a freaking sweetheart of a person, really great guy. Um, and he still keeps in touch with me, which, you know, for a guy that does a a world renowned podcast for pro wrestling, kinda it blows my mind he'll keep in touch and check in on how I'm doing. <laughs> um but every time I think about like Hugging someone. Even last week when when last episode when Bernie mentioned hugging, I'm like, oh Jesus. I, <laughs> I, I go right back to that awkward hug with Barry at Bojangles. <laughs> um and if you're listening and you go to Bojangles, the chicken is fantastic. But trust me when I tell you this, get the breakfast sandwich. That is one of the best biscuit breakfast sandwich biscuit breakfast sandwiches I've ever had. Never ate a I didn't know if I said brisket at first, so I had to go back and like rewind in my head and say it over. I have uh, another one. A brisket breakfast sandwich would be fantastic too. Oh my god, let's be, be honest. Absolutely, um, <laughs> absolutely, that'd be really good. And, be and speaking of uh, of wrestling podcast, let's. Uh, oh, I thought I'm going to give a speaking sh- of food. <laughs> well, we can always get back to that too. Um, 
But speaking of wrestling podcasts, I want to give a shout out to uh, to Drew, Drew Fis R. Jones, Drew Cephas, the Andrea Drew connection, um, whatever his nickname of the week is. Um, <laughs> Drew, Drew had um, Drew out of the kindness of his heart sent me a custom made, not another sport sports podcast shirt with um, a. He took crying Jordan's face and put it on Stephen A. Smith, and it's hilarious. Um, but the shirt was a little snug. It was fat guy in a little shirt. <laughs> um, so that just means I got to lose a little bit more weight before I throw it on during the show. But thank you again, Drew. Um, that was very kind of you to do that for me. I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, so, okay, another story here. So um, <laughs> on the episode one time, we were going to – interview or we were interviewing um vandal drummond who is uh, a california independent wrestling legend um has like over 40 some years in the business and in the intro to the interview i i called him drew fissar jones and like it, it threw him so off he was speechless when i threw to him in the intro like <laughs> he didn't know what to do and it <laughs> And in a side message outside of the recording, Drew goes, you fucking bodied me with that. Because <laughs> he just was not prepared. <laughs> Dude, look at our last names. I mean, come on. Well, no, Drew Fissar Jones is not his, it's it, it's not his name. Um, it's it's a play on, a, on an old time territory wrestler named Rufus R. Jones. And okay, didn't know that. And so Drew Fissar Jones was was what I called him to in the intro, and it just it threw him off so bad. <laughs> That's great. But uh, oh, that's but yeah, funny. that's that's all I got. Sorry for the awkward pause there. Um, <laughs> all right, let's roll into the uh, the first half. <laughs> uh, Eagles legend, for sure, future Hall of Famer. Jason Kelsey retired, and let me tell you, that was a hard interview, not interview, hard press conference to sit through. Not because it was a bad press conference or it was a bad speech. I, if Emotional. You, it, you have to not have emotions and feelings to be able to sit through that and not get choked up because there were multiple points in that press conference where I'm like, I'm going to freaking break down here listening to this. Well, the fact that Kelsey has been this, you know, an eagle for all his career has done so much, not just for the you know, organization, but outside. And just for him to have that much emotion for how much he loves the sport, how much he loves being an eagle. It's yeah, it was, it was a little rough to go through to, you know, just, just listening to him for how much energy he has for the city of Philadelphia. You no, know, he's he, a, he's a Philadelphia. He is Philadelphia. He is, Philadelphia. he is, you know, he is big in Philadelphia. That's just a general. He is Philadelphia. You know, he's embraced it. One thing I want to touch on here and, and I didn't think about touching on it until you mentioned it just now. There is an influx of athletes who are embracing the city, embracing the fan bases, and making the city their own. Um, and as a lifelong Phillies fan, specifically, um, it's really endearing to see. To see these athletes want to come to Philadelphia. It doesn't matter what team. There are athletes that want to come to Philadelphia, that want to play in Philadelphia, that want to play in front of these fans, these diehard, knowledgeable, passionate sports fans. Philadelphia is one of those cities where they emb they embrace more than anything that I mean, you hear from not just athletes, but coaches even on how hard it is to play in any type of Philadelphia venue for how hard it is to play because of the fans on how much this, you know, on how much the fan base embraces it, you know, just to go balls to the walls. 
Well, and I think. Go ahead. And the, fact, and the fact that, well, I say coaches even because uh, Flyers coach, he, you know, from if I remember right, one of the interviews he had, he at, after they played in game seven of the 04 finals, he said, I want to, you know, if I if I could play for Philly, if I remember right, I could be wrong. But if I remember right, so that just says how much people want to, you know. Since uh, play. since I you mean, mentioned the Flyers, didn't their current coach get tossed the other night? Yeah, Torts got tossed. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, honestly, I think he's one of the best coaches the Flyers could have right now, just because of his attitude, his emotion, his just the way he is. He's just. And the fact that not just I, – I, I hear some fans – you know, a, a lot of fans love him, but not just that. But this, the organization is behind him just for this because they said they'll pay his fines. Any fines That's he'd great. get, any fines he'd get, they said that the team – you know, this the, the, they'll pay the fines. Just because of how passionate this coach, you know, you know, John Torrell is, he is great for what he is with the Flyers. He shows that emotion. He he's again a a coach, not just a player, but a coach that embraces Philly. Right. You know the attitude, the emotion, the grit that what Philadelphia is, and the same thing as 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 what Kelsey did. I mean, just with uh, what he did throughout his career. Well, here's the thing that I think, one, Philadelphia sports fans have for far too long been misunderstood. And we might be making this more about Philadelphia sports fans than Jason Kelsey, and that might just be how this topic goes. That's Um, what it is. But we've been misunderstood. We've been maligned. We've been vilified for decades now. And I think the sports world is waking up to the reality of what Philadelphia sports fans are. We're passionate. We're knowledgeable. We support hardworking athletes. We don't want prima donnas. We don't want players who think they're too good. We want hard-nosed, hardworking, die-hard players on the field. There's a reason why when Chase Utley left and came back as a Dodger for multiple years, he would get a standing ovation. Every time. Every time. There's a reason why they had to pause the game in his final game at Citizens Bank Park as a Dodger because they appreciated his hard work. Look, we lo- everyone loved J-Roll. J-Roll had the attitude, had the swagger, but Chase was like the working man's hero. You, I mean, you read the stories. He'd be there at like five in the morning studying tape. He'd be the first one on the field. He would be the last one to leave. Like, how do you not cheer for someone like that? And now all these teams are embracing players like this. And that's great. That's what these fans want. We want guys who are going to work hard to get championships. We don't just want. Go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, no. No. Uh... It's just that Philadelphia is that city to where if you don't perform, you're going to know it. The fans will let you know. Right. And that's how passionate they are behind their teams. doesn't matter if it's the Phillies, the Eagles, the Flyers, the Sixers. It doesn't matter. They're going to get behind whatever sport, you know, is going on because that's how passionate they are. And when you get players who also – get behind that passion like Utley, Kelsey, Harper, Embiid, you know, just in, just to get behind that in general shows a lot. Allen Iverson's city. another one. You know, it just shows how much sports figures love the city of Philadelphia and how passionate right. they either, if they're an opponent, they hate coming to it. They hate coming to Philadelphia because of that. Or they're an opponent who wants to come play here for a Philadelphia team 
because of their experience as an opponent. Exactly. <laughs> no, that, that's exactly it. Because you either, when you come to Philly, you hate coming here. If you're an opponent, you hate coming here just because of the fans. But yet, if you're an opponent, you want to play for the fans because how passionate they are. I mean, that's... And, uh... I mean, like I said, look at Harper. He came to Philly. He embraced it. Well, that's that's funny. I was just going to segue to that. Um, there's a story Jason Worth told where after a few trips to Philadelphia, Bryce started picking Jason Worth's mind about Philadelphia. What's it like playing there? What's the atmosphere? Like, what's it like as someone on the Phillies? <laughs> and Worth kind of like, he kind of said, like, I knew... Bryce was going to end up being a Philly at some point because of his interest in playing in Philadelphia. Like there it is. That was, he, that was his destination. Like he just knew the way Bryce was asking questions about Philadelphia. He was going to end up being a Philly. Um, but you know, on the, on the, on the opposite side of that, I'd say the most recent player to feel the wrath of the fans would be Ben Simmons. And I think when Ben Simmons was here with the Sixers and he noped out of playoffs that there again is that prima donna Mm -hmm. that I'm too good. I don't want to work. I don't want to hustle. Yeah. That's not going to last. The the sad thing with him, Philly, the sad thing with him is he did it to the nets too. After he got traded, he he did it to the nets in the playoffs. Um, And sadly, if you go back and look at his career before the pros, he did it. In amateur ball, he did it in college ball. He did it to the Olympic team for Australia. Like he's he just he nopes out when when it gets too tough. And yeah, you're gonna feel the wrath of the fans in Philadelphia if that's oh your idea. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. That doesn't mean we're bad fans. Why we're why passionate. should it be the fans' fault that it's passionate? We're that's calling the carpet passion. someone who lacks heart. Or lacks passion. I mean, well, you said, I mean, you you said it best. Philadelphia wants players who are passionate, hardworking, and gritty. <laughs> gritty, yes, gritty. Yes, Got to look gritty in general. <laughs> but just that type of player who, when it comes time to have to get dirty, they'll get dirty. I'm going to use a hockey term here. They want grinders. We want grinders. Yeah, exactly. You know, Jason does, does Kelsey it, was a grinder. Absolutely. Well, uh, well, not just going on with uh, uh, Jason Kelsey, but also Fletcher Cox. He also retired. He was one of those. He was one of those defensemen too. Yeah. That was a that was a hard nosed defenseman. So I mean, Philadelphia lost a big piece of their team on both sides of the ball. I mean, Kelsey was always good for you know the 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 tush push as they always called it. Uh, And interesting enough, I mean, and this is going to be something I think I'm curious to see how it play, how it plays out with the fans. Is Saquon Barkley coming to coming back to Pennsylvania? I'm curious with that too, just because of how injury prone he was with, with the job. I'm more curious about it because of the crossover of Penn state fans and Philadelphia sports fans. I'm just more curious. I'm going to tell you right now, now. I bet you that's going to be one of the most bought jerseys in Philadelphia this season for football. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it at all because that's a big, that's a big pickup for the Phillies right now. That's a big pickup. You know, the Eagles. Oh yeah. Eagles. Sorry. (laughs) I'm looking at your Phillies hat. (laughs) That's all right. Um, Another interesting move they made today. That that is. Yeah. I mean, like I said, Barkley is a big pickup in general. Um, and it's kind of deviating here from Philadelphia. I mean, it is Philadelphia related because the, the Eagles did get him, but I find it really interesting. Um, the Steelers had reassured Kenny Pickett when they were courting Russell Wilson, that they were still behind Kenny Pickett. They wanted, they were invested in him. They still wanted him to be on the Steelers team because he was a pit graduate. He was a hometown boy. And within a few hours of Russell Wilson's press conference, 
they shipped him out to to Philadelphia. <laughs> um, I saw that. That was kind of like what? What's here's going the, on? Here's the problem. This should be a situation where Kenny Pickett gets fired up, wants to shove it down their throat that they made a mistake. The only problem is he's the backup quarterback. I don't see him beating Hurts for the job. So no. he has all know. that fire lit under him and <laughs> nowhere to go. Kind of yeah, bad for him. That's the bad part of bad because he, yeah. That's but you turning it over to the fan base. Uh, if he gets a shot, I bet you they're going to be behind him 100% because, again, Philadelphia sports fans are educated. They're going to know 100% exactly why he got traded and the bullshit that happened to him in Pittsburgh where, oh, we're behind you. You're our guy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it turns into a screw you aspect. Right. The supposed family-friendly Steelers. We're a family. We're a team. Oh, uh, yeah, not you. You were. Yeah. You're a hometown you're, boy, but no. You're the black sheep. <laughs> uh, but That's what it almost turns into. I mean, hell, I mean, do you think he was going to be starter when Russell Wilson got signed? Russell Wilson is not the Russell Wilson of even like five years ago, so. No. But the fact, though, that people think he is, and the fact that the Steelers think he is I, to get I rid of Kenny, you know, you know, to you know, to get rid of Pickett. Wilson is still talented enough, like a Joe Flacco. You can where, be talented all you where want. You, it's can, just, you can turn it like, around for one more season, and we've seen it happen before. Everyone thought Peyton Manning was washed up, and then he had a, he turned it around in in Denver. But the thing is, though, when you have the line in front of you, that's the big difference when you're a quarterback. That's the biggest difference. I mean, well, if you know, we will see what happens is how I'm going to take it. I, I, you know, my wife's a Steelers fan. I know a lot of Steelers fans. I hope for them this works out to some degree for them, gets them back into the playoff picture. I don't know if this is the answer. I'm not saying Kenny Pickett was the answer either. But I think he was much closer to what they should be doing than what they did. But the other problem is, and this is a problem in almost every sport now, every team's in a win-now mode. No one's looking to build a dynasty outside of a few teams. Everyone's in a win-now mode, even the Phils. I love the Phils, but they have a time frame because they sign these players to five-year, four-year deals. They're going to age out quick. And they want to win a World Series as soon as they can. And they oh, definitely yeah. want to do it under Harper's contract. Um, which, for the record, I don't think at this point they need to win a World Series for Harper's contract to have paid for itself. I think he has delivered more than his share since that contract. And they've, you know, he came to a, a city with the goal of having a team built around him, not him being the team. He wanted to be a part of a team that could go into the playoffs, and they did exactly that. They picked up the right kind of free agents, They made and they brought up the right players from the farm system to where everyone's complementing each other on the field and, and at the plate. And that's why, I, you know, I... I'm not saying they're going to the World Series. I'm never going to be that optimistic. I was that optimistic one season... And they proved me right. I've never been that optimistic again. Um, well, get there. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not going to lie to you. When that 08 season started, I knew they were winning the World Series. I knew it. Dude, I Didn't like second guess had. it. I knew it from the beginning of the season they were winning the World Series. I've never felt that way about a team since. And never did before either. It was such... It was a perfect storm, that team. Well, they um, came close already. They did, and then last year they just went silent in the yeah, NLCS. The, yeah, the bats went silent. That's um, for sure. Yeah. I don't know. I, I couldn't imagine being a fan for another franchise. I or another just another city, I should say. Um I mean the only I mean the only sports I follow outside of Philadelphia is the Niners. That's about it. Other than that, I'm Flyers, Phillies, 
all the way through. And I've been a Niners fan since I was, you know. Well, I, I know quite a few Niners fans from the same era of, of but when they I discovered also, the Niners. And how could you not? Like, you know, I'm not going to, you know. But also, I'm an Eagles fan. You know, that's like basically my second team of the run. I'm rooting for them. It's one of those types of things. Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, fantasy football killed me having a favorite team. But do I do I, are there players I like? Absolutely. And Jason Kelsey was a player I liked watching. Just like, you know, watching all those Steelers games over the years of Jamie, I loved Palomalu because Palomalu, Palomalu is a player who could have worked in Philadelphia. And oh, the fans have. would have loved him because he was, again, hardworking. He was passionate. Mm -hmm. And that's a scary motherfucker on the field. <laughs> yeah. When that his... clip of him just leaping over everyone. Well, the fact that he had the perfect timing just to do that. He had the perfect timing just to do that leap. Just you to ever... get, you know, it's, it's ridiculous in his timing. Did you ever hear Pat McAfee's story about coming back to... So Pat McAfee's from Pittsburgh, grew up a Steelers fan. He got drafted by the Colts. That's where he was a kicker for, right? So the Colts are playing the Steelers in, in Pittsburgh. It's his homecoming game. He's playing in front of his family in, in, where he went to games as a fan, playing against his favorite team. Like It was, just, it was the best night of his life, right? And they were going to do a trick play where he was going to be able to run the ball in and score the touchdown, right? And he's like, I got this. I got this. And he's like, wait a minute. They don't put Palomalu on special teams. Why is Palomalu out here? <laughs> uh -oh. Last minute, last minute, what, ended, what was supposed to be a trick play turned into a kick. And <laughs> all because Palomalu was on there. He's like, I don't want to die. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> You probably made the right choice on that one. <laughs> I mean, good lord. But uh, it's it's a great story. Um, that guy's, a, I mean, he's freaking entertaining on his show. Um, not that we get paid to mention it, but he's entertaining on his show. Oh, yeah, he is. Um, yeah, this was supposed to be about the Eagles and Jason Kelsey, and it's really just been about Philadelphia sports fans like I thought it was going to go. Um, yeah, that's what it turned out to be, yeah. <laughs> I would say his his retirement speech, just to round it out here before we wrap it up, his retirement speech I would put on par with Mike Schmitz. Um, it was a rough it was obviously, one to watch. It was, it was obviously emotional. much longer than Mike Schmitz, but the emotion was, I would say, equal to Mike Schmitz. The emotion was there, the emotion of how much he loves the sport and not just the sport, but the city of Philadelphia. The story of him and Travis was that you know. that got to me hard. Who? So, yeah, it's yeah. See, it's probably better. We talked about Philadelphia sports fans uh, because just talking about parts of his speech over here are already getting me like, oh, God, I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, so yeah we better just leave it where it is um yeah he was a great player i mean he's you know he yeah he he's a funny guy i mean just all the cherry stuff he's done just all i know is he can down a beer in seconds that's all i you know from all the videos i've seen <laughs> he's gonna have a fun co-pop made of him <laughs> and not an official it? eagles one just one of him in a beanie shirtless celebrating his brother. I still love the video of when he found the Nacho Libre mask. At the Super Bowl party uh, when the Chiefs won. <laughs> you mean a Lucha Libre mask. Nacho Libre is a movie. Lucha Libre is the or, style of wrestling. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Either oh. way, still hilarious. Well, I think that's the end of the, the first period or the first half. Yeah, let's go to first half. Yeah, let's let's do that. So, all right, <laughs> that'd be the end of it, and we'll be right back.